Hello and welcome to Clearview News Desk. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. I am Gloria Atta. Welcome. The indefinite nationwide strike called by the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, has commenced with various unions shutting down their workplaces in compliance. Earlier today, Clearview News crew monitored the level of compliance in the federal capital territory, Abuja, and reports that it was a graveyard-like scene as the streets of the once bubbly city center was a shadow of its former self. The report. Following the indefinite nationwide strike declared by the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, banks, public schools and government offices across the federal capital territory, Abuja, were closed down as workers complied with the directive of the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress. Recall that the NLC had ordered workers to begin an indefinite nationwide strike following the May 31 deadline for the federal government to approve and implement a new national minimum wage. Although there was a last-minute intervention on Sunday night by the National Assembly to prevent the nationwide strike, it was futile as the meeting with government representatives and labor leaders ended in a deadlock. The federal government had insisted on 60,000 naira as the new minimum wage, while labor demanded 495,000 naira as what was acceptable to the unions. Clevy News crew monitor the level of compliance in the federal capital territory, Abuja, and reports that most banks did not open their doors to customers. Also, the federal secretariat and other government establishments were closed and offices deserted as workers complied with the directives of the labor unions. Pupils of public primary and secondary schools were not left out as those who went to school were seen returning home after they were turned back at their various school gates by teachers. Reports from other states show that it is a similar tale. Our correspondent in Lagos gathered that hundreds of passengers were left stranded at the Murtala Mohammed Airport in Lagos with the International Wing getting a 24-hour window to comply. Gloria Atta, reporting for Clearview News. Meanwhile, the presidency says acceding to the organized labor's demand of 494,000 naira minimum wage will cripple the country's economy. Presidential spokesperson Ajuri Ngelale said this while featuring on a TV program in Abuja. Ajuri said the consequences of allowing labor to have their way will not be in the interest of the country. The Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, embarked on an indefinite nationwide strike over the federal government's failure to accept the new minimum wage. While the labor unions have pegged their demand on 494,000 naira, the federal government offered 60,000 naira. Speaking on the development, Ngelali said many small businesses will close shop if the federal government and the organized private sector were to pay what the labor is asking for. Now, the city of David Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, in Lagos, has suspended Pastor Idowu Iluyomade following the extravagant birthday party of his wife shortly after the death of Herbert Wigwe, former Group Chief Executive Officer of Access Holdings PLC. According to reports, a top pastor of the church, who did not want his name mentioned, said the decision to suspend Iluyomade was in response to public outcry against against the party. His suspension, according to sources in the church, was done via a letter over the weekend. He has since been replaced by Pastor Chris Kwande of RCCG Resurrection Parish of Region 11 of the church. Wigwe, who died on board a chopper in February, was a member of the parish. The late banker died alongside his wife, Chizoba, son, Chizi, and a former group chairman of Nigerian Exchange Group PLC. Abimbola Okubanjo. People from various walks of life are still reacting to the issue of traditional oath taken. While some are saying the idea is primitive, Clevy News Desk is still coming across many people who are saying yes to the idea. One of them is a veteran journalist, Sam Odion Bello, who believes that traditional oath taken will sanitize the system. 
In this chat with Clairview's Mifono Kohn, he says it is unfortunate to note that many public office holders believe there is God but have their trust in money. Okay, so, start, so what is your stand on traditional oath taken by public or office holders? Thank you very much. Um, my stand on it is, is one of the most brilliant things I have had this year. I support it wholeheartedly. I'm a Christian. But I support it. It's a very good thing. If it can be introduced in our political arrangement, I'll be very, very happy and things will move forward. But sir, you're a Christian. How do you imagine a believer holding court class, chicken, with red cloth tied on it, swearing an oath? What's, uh, how hey, how man. does it sound? Do you know where the Christians go at night? Is it because we all carry our gilly, carry all our bada, carry our cap? and carry Bible like this, they greet you, Elder, well done, God bless you. Is it because of that? Do you know where many Christians and Muslims, do you know where we go at night? Is it because Jesus will not just appear and say, ah, where were you? Ah, don't do this, don't do that. Many Christians and Muslims, we believe in God, but we have our trust in money. We will do anything for money. And we are not afraid. All right, I will commit offense now. By the time I approach Jesus, possibly with three days fast, we are, we are good to go. In my own church, my geo asked me, asked a Sunday school the other day, and I will tell you our conclusion, that if a Boko Haram member who has confessed to have even been one of the uh, men that married, that married three of all those cheap girls or whatever, that if you see the person and say, it is in your power to forgive me. Will you forgive the person? All of us will say, no, how can we forgive? They have truncated the they have truncated. But if the person comes to church and begs for forgiveness, genuinely, uh, Acts 3.19, he said, repent of your sins so that times of refreshing can come from God. Pastor will tell you that once you repent genuinely, then that is the end of the story. We know that we won't repent for a good God of iron. You wouldn't have gone to Okija Shrine to swear and you say that you will come and repent or Amadioha. Okay. You won't repent now. Okay, sir, but don't you see the possibility that they can maneuver this uh, chief priest? And because you, 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 it can be done with fake chief priests. Don't forget there are fakes everywhere. Human beings, there are fake human beings. There are fake husbands, there are fake wives, there are fake pastors. You hear that I was called by God. Many pastors called God. God did not call them. So those ones, they will say they are pastors. Have you ever, you are a journalist, you will hear that, okay, uh, this man of God, uh, they caught him with uh, another pastor's wife. This imam, they caught him with another imam's wife. Have you ever heard that they caught a traditional priest with another traditional priest's wife? It, look, drastic problems call for drastic solutions. That is my take. But do you think this can scale through and be part of our constitution? Uh, uh, no, now it can never scale through now. Who are the people that will make it scale through? You are either talking about judiciary, you are talking about the executive, you are talking about legislature. Tell me, those three groups, who will support that one? Uh, are they not the people we are even talking about? Can you bring in a law that will work against you? It is not possible. Go and protest, go and do everything. Who are the people that will make it work? Are they not the ones we are talking about? So that's whether old taking, we are just using it to talk. Maybe any miracle can happen in, this, in years to come. I don't think it is this generation. But if you think right now as we are talking, you are a journalist, I'm a journalist. You know before you even ask me that it cannot stay true. What is your advice for the corrupt public officials? Yes. My advice to corrupt public officials, remember, one day, one day, one day, you will never plant corn and pluck mango. You will never pluck, uh, plant orange oil and pluck coconut oil. What you plant, you will reap. And that is talking about your offsprings. Whatever we are doing today, some people are coming to reap whether you like it or not. I wonder why people, you are in a position of, you are in positions of authority, you have your votes, 
you do this road when you do the road of course whether you like you are collecting your allowances you are collecting this why do you need to kill yourself with this money that you will not carry to heaven or hell with that you will not carry to hell not even heaven this time around what is the problem so one day that is my answer one day let us remember that day you will be called to answer questions the national chairman of the Action Democratic Party, ADP, Yabagi Yusuf Sani, has sent a mockery congratulatory message to President Paula Ahmed Tinubu for taking Nigerians backward with his ascent to a bill that reinstates the old anthem, Nigeria Be Healthy. Yabagi, who made the remark at the ADP's party secretariat in Abuja, also called on the lawmakers who facilitated the speedy return of the old anthem to, as a matter of urgency, change the current hardship Nigerians are facing today to the good old days. Clevy News' Imefu Nokon tells us more. What do they say? They say a hungry man. A hungry man. And if not very angry. If not very angry. So, so I'm not sure a song can do it. You know, what we need to do, there are realities. There are hard decisions that we must take. These to those who the proponent of this may have their own reasons. But why did we change from this to the one that we we now have or we had? Because somebody said it has been passed to, to law already, isn't it? So I congratulate the president, you know, for taking us backward. Nigeria we held the was used from independence in nineteen sixty until nineteen seventy eight. A rice oil compatriot was adopted in 1978, replacing Nigeria We Healthy. Nigeria We Healthy was adopted as Nigeria's first national anthem on October 1, 1960. Francis Beda composed the anthem, while the lyrics were written by Lillian Jane Williams, a British expatriate who lived in Nigeria when it achieved independence. The national chairman of Action Democratic Party, Yabaji Sani, in his reaction said, The realities in Nigeria today is not sung. He therefore called on President Tinibu and lawmakers to ensure a speedy revert of the current hardship being experienced in Nigeria today to the good old days. The realities are there. It's not the song. It's not the anthem, really. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's not the melody, it's not the lyrics. Let's see it on the ground. Let's see it inside here, feel it here. Okay? That is, I think, you know, the main thing that the National Assembly should, with dispatch, as they did with the old song to new song, or from new song to old song. Let them change the lot of Nigerians too, from this hardship to good old days. Let them use the same energy, the same you know speed with which they pass this one. Let them pass those you know uh, 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 amendments if they need to amend the constitution. You know whatever they need to do, let them do it. So we can quickly reduce or eliminate corruption in this system. Recall that on May 28, 2024, the House of Representatives passed a bill to revert from the current anthem to Nigeria, We Held Thee. President Bola Metinibu on Wednesday, May 29, signed the National Anthem Bill 2024 into law. The younger generation may need to become more familiar with the story behind the newly re-adopted anthem and the women behind the lyrics and composition. Imefono Kun, reporting for Clevy News. Away from Nigeria, the war in Sudan has taken a worrisome dimension. In this special report, Clevy News Desk takes a close look at the impact of war on children in the landlocked country in East Central Africa, where children bear the brunt of the devastating crisis as violence persists. Prior to the outbreak of conflict, Sudan's economy was marred by rampant inflation and shortages of essential goods, leading to protests across the country. Now, conflict has worsened the economic crisis. 
nearly half of Sudan's population is unemployed, while the Sudanese pound has lost at least 50% of its value. Sudan's armed conflict has ignited one of the world's fastest unfolding crises. Out of 20 million people needing humanitarian aid, 14 million are children. The conflict has forced 8.6 million people to flee, creating the largest displacement crisis globally. Within Sudan, over 6.6 .6 million people are internally displaced, seeking shelter in over 6,700 locations. A majority of the 1.8 million who have fled the country have sought refuge in neighboring nations like the Central African Republic, Chad, Egypt, Ethiopia and South Sudan as of April 14, 2024. Economic decline and conflict have left 17.7 .7 million people, approximately 37% of Sudan's population in acute food insecurity, with 4.9 million at emergency levels. The Food and Agriculture Organization warns of a severe food crisis and urges immediate action. Meanwhile, ongoing fighting Restricted human access and escalating food insecurity has put the people of Sudan at risk of catastrophic hunger, especially in key crop regions, worsening the situation. The impact of the ongoing conflict in Sudan has devastating effects on its people. Millions of people have been displaced and face immense uncertainty. Even before the conflict, many people faced hunger daily as a result of climate shocks rising food prices and political unrest. The ongoing conflict has intensified pre-existing challenges.